Hi, this is Tim. I put out a PLC quiz challenge to program a basic start-stop reverse motor control with a few hitches. So let's switch one in the left position. You press the green button, the green light comes on. You press the red button, the green light goes off. We switch it to the right position to represent reverse. We press the green button, the yellow light comes on. We press the red button, the yellow light goes off. Now with either of our lights on, when we switch switch one, the light had to go out. Now just to push some of us a little further, I made switch four actually execute this in different programming languages. Depending on how you programmed it, when you switch from one programming language to another, it would either continue in the state of the previous language or it would switch back to the state of the last time the language you were switching to was used. So I said when you switch switch four, make sure both outputs turn off without actually looking at switch four's state. So that was actually very challenging. In fact, I'm gonna be honest, I don't like the way I came up with that. But let me show you what I ended up with. And I'm gonna go into a little more detail on the latter than I am on function blocker structure text, mainly because I had several people ask questions who are getting started. And I just wanna take a few minutes to help them through this. Here's what I came up with for our ladder logic. And let's skip over these first three rungs to start with and just concentrate on rungs three and four because this is what's actually controlling the green light when we're running our green light program. Which if we go to our main program here, I have switch four in the left position. So we are running our ladder code, our function blocker structure text, neither of them are being scanned. So when I press the green button, we can see that we get our green indicator right here and our red button is a normally closed contact. So we have a one there and right now switch one is to the left position. So we have a zero there. And that wrote a one to our green light. And then we have a branch around sealing in this button here with that green light. So once this is written a one here, I can let my finger off of the button and this one will hold it in place. And same on our yellow light. Right now, it's waiting on switch one to be in the right position. Now notice I didn't have to add any special code in here when using the OTE to deal with this switch one switching from the left to the right. Because the moment that I switch switch one to the right, we're gonna have a one in input four and this is gonna be false and that's gonna drop out the green light. Now some of you did write this with the latch and the unlatch. And so you struggled a little bit with getting this to turn off. You needed an additional unlatch to deal with this. But when I switch switch one to the right position, this immediately becomes false. This writes a zero to our green light. And we are ready with our yellow light. Press the green button and we see the green indicator come on here. Yellow light is on and yeah, we have that seal in so I can let my finger off of it. And now it'll stay on until either the red button is pressed or switch one is switched to the left position. And now let's look at the top three rungs. And I really thought I would come up with something better and I've kind of been waiting to see someone come up with something that just worked a lot better than what I had here. And this is how I'm determining whether this is the first time we have ran our ladder routine to deal with switching from our ladder program to our function block into our structured text program. Because remember, we couldn't look at switch four's position. We had to use program flow to figure this out. So the first thing I did is I just unlatched the run function block and run structured text routines. And I'm doing basically the same thing in the other two routines. If I'm in the function block when I'm unlatching the ladder and the structure text, and in the structure text, I'm unlatching the ladder and the function block. So if I have been in one of the other routines, then this run ladder bit is gonna be a zero. And if it's a zero, I'm unlatching the green light and the yellow light. Now note here, a lot of people tell me you can't do this, but I'm unlatching the green light right here and I am using an OTE for the green light here. And this is actually a really good example of where there's nothing wrong with doing this. 
And then right after that, I am going to write a one with an output energized to that run ladder. So the next scan, when this comes around, this is gonna be false. So this does make it where this particular rung is true for just that one scan. Now again, I'm not super happy with the way I ended up doing this, but this was the cleanest way I could come up with. Now let's look at our function block routine. So here's the function block logic, and let's skip over this first one for now. And right here is our green light logic. So right now we have a one in our green light because we're still running the ladder routine. If I go over here to our main routine, you can see I've got switch four in the left position. So if the green button or the green light is on, we're gonna get a one here. And then we're looking for that and the red button and not switch four to the right position and then not this first scan block. And so when I switch over to function block with switch four, one, you're gonna see the green light go out. So there it goes out, and now we press the green button, our green light comes on. We press the red button, because right here we have an and, so we have to have all these conditions good. When I press it, you see a zero go here, and that's gonna write a zero to our green light. And same thing, I can switch switch one into the right position, and now I press the green button, the yellow light's gonna come on, and then I press the red button, you're gonna see a zero come here, and it's gonna go out. Now, I am definitely not happy with the way my interlock turned out on this one. And I think the big thing I learned here is I need to understand more about how function block diagram program flow works. And I really played with some different things, and yeah, this is not very neat now. But all right, we're looking for this run function block. Same thing, you know, it's written a zero to it by both the ladder routine and structured text. So I'm looking for it to first be a one, but then we have a B not, which means we're looking for a zero. And then on that rising bit of it being a zero, I am setting this first scan bit to be a zero. And I think somebody can show me a much better way of doing this. But function-wise, what this does is it makes it where, aside from that first scan, we're gonna have a one in that bit. And I'm using a, that band statement there to drop that out if we don't. And then right after that, I'm just throwing a one into that run function block, and same thing, I'm writing a zero to the run ladder and run structured text. So I would not give myself a good grade on how I did this, and I hope to come back and concentrate a little more on this later. And finally, we have structured text over here. So if we go to structured text, then it looks very similar. I'm writing a zero to the run ladder. I'm writing a zero to the function block. And then if not structured text, which means if structured text is a zero, then I'm writing a zero to our green light, writing a zero to our yellow light, and I'm writing a one to our run structured text. And then, Right here we can see, well, one we're in, let me get, all right, I gotta switch, switch four over, that's gonna get this program running. And we see there right away, it just set those to zero and set our run structure text to a one. All right, I'm gonna switch, switch four here to the left position. Now we have a zero there and it's looking for a not. So local colon one input zero, if it's a one, which is our green light, or if our motor is running, and we have a one in our red light, which means it's not pressed, and switch one is in the left position, then go right a one to the green light, and we're gonna see that. There it goes. Else right a zero. So when I press the red button, this condition is not gonna be satisfied anymore, and yeah, it writes a zero. So this does the exact same functionality as our function block and our ladder. Now, I would give myself a F, on writing this and really I wrote this and just like all of us I got it working and I moved on to the next job and then I jumped back over here because I knew I needed to tell you what I came up with and I put absolutely positively no documentation in this so while this works when the next person that comes up is not gonna have a clue how this works and so I should have commented this out. So there you go, there's the three ways that I came up with 
to program our start stop reverse in ladder logic, function blocks, and structured text. So give me your feedback on this. What do you think of these type of quizzes? Are they, do they help you learn something? Is it something you'd like to see more of? Let me know down in the comments. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber with TW Controls. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like these. When you're ready for some intense training, check out our PLC lab. And if our videos have helped you out, but you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.